All right, so at this point, you should be able to do all operations with fractions, meaning you should know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So we're going to review, since it's been a little while since we've done multiplication and division, we'll do a few review problems, and then I want you to do some practice with all operations. So the first one we're going to do is going to be one-third times two-fifths. So one third times two fifths, I'm going to multiply the numerators. Remember that's my procedure for multiplying with fractions. I multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So one times two gives me two, three times five gives me 15. So my answer is two fifteenths. And then, you know, if I had one where I needed to simplify, like, let's say that I had four fifths times, we'll say one half. So now I'm going to multiply the numerators. Four times one gives me four. Five times two gives me 10. So I know these are both even numbers. So I can divide them both by two over two in order to simplify. So four divided by two gives me two, 10 divided by two gives me five. So two fifths is the simplified form of four tenths. And we'll go ahead and do a division problem now. So with our division problems, we only divided whole numbers by unit fractions and unit fractions by whole numbers. So that's what we're gonna look at right now. So if I had one third, divided by five, you know, we looked at using models with these and everybody got pretty good with that. And so then we noticed kind of a shortcut that we could do. And so when we have one third divided by five, we found out that we could multiply the five times the denominator and that gave us one fifteenth. Then we had one where we had five divided by one third. So this one is asking how many one thirds are in five. So models really help to kind of show that. And if you think about how many thirds are in one, we have three thirds in one. So if I had five, then I'm gonna have 15. So my answer five divided by one third is 15. And so notice the difference between the two. And then we'll go ahead and throw in another multiplication one because I want you to notice the difference with it. So if I had five times one third, Remember with this type of problem, we can turn the fraction or the whole number into a fraction by putting a one underneath it. And then we just follow our rules for multiplying. Five times one gives me five. One times three gives me three. So that's gonna be five thirds. And you know we said that we could write fractions as division problems. So another way I could write that would be five divided by three. So I could change that improper fraction to a mixed number. I can think about how many threes I have, so how many thirds, and I can, that would make one. Three over three would give us one, and then I have two thirds left over from that. So again, I can take out my whole number, that's gonna give me one, and I can do five minus three to see that I have two thirds left over. So that's another way that I could write that. And then, you know, what we've been working on this week we've done adding and subtracting now with fractions. And so the difference with adding and subtracting is we have to get common denominators when we're adding and subtracting. So if I had, let's say I had one and four eighths minus a half. So what I could do on that, is I would need to get common denominators. And, you know, some of you may have noticed right off the problem that I chose, four eight equal to a half. So these are already equal amounts. So I could change this one if I multiplied by four, if I wanted to get a common denominator of eight, you know, that's gonna give me four eights. So four eights minus four eights is going to just be zero and then I've got one minus nothing so my answer is going to end up just being one. 